Hi, I'm Claudia Fröhling from Java Magazine. I'm sitting here at Jack's in Mainz, and with me is Marcus Lagergren. Hi, Marcus. Hello, uh, nice to be here. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, I certainly can. I am a, um, an engineer working for um, Oracle in the, the Java language team. Um, I live in Stockholm, Sweden, which is uh, one of the bigger uh, JVM engineering sites uh, within Oracle. And in the Java language team, I'm mainly doing stuff uh, that uh, has to do with um, uh, getting dynamic languages uh, to run on the JVM, using the JVM as a platform right now. So you're here to present a keynote on Nashorn and uh, a session as well. And yeah, the big news from Oracle is Nashorn is out. It's, um, could you give a short definition what Nashorn is? I can. Uh, Nashorn is a um, runtime for JavaScript written 100% uh, in uh, pure Java, uh, like Rhino, which is its uh, spiritual predecessor, so to speak. But a lot has happened, and Rhino is very old technology. It's been around for maybe 15 years even, and people still use it. Uh, the fact that it refuses to die shows some of the power you get by deploying stuff on the JVM, deploying alien languages on the JVM. You have the pluggability from JavaScript, in the case of Rhino, to reach uh, all the Java JDKs and all the very mature things in the JVM. Uh, but Rhino is old and slow, and originally uh, the Nashorn project started out as um, a proof of concept to see that whatever stuff we did for Java 7 and now to a larger extent in Java 8, enabling dynamic languages to be deployed on the JVM uh, worked. So you could say it started as an internal proof of concept to see is stuff like invoke dynamic, is it fast, does it scale, can the JVM optimize it enough? Uh, because uh, Nasrin is really just one facet of, of the larger mission that Oracle has to turn the JVM into a from a Java virtual machine into a multi-language, uh, a polyglot virtual machine. So, um, and that was the thing with Invoke Dynamic at um, coming with Java, Zim, at Java 7 um, to get the JVM more polyglot. That was a big milestone, right? Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, the, it's obviously attractive to, to uh, deploy a language, something that's not Java, compile it to bytecode and run it on the JVM because you don't have to write your own garbage collector. People like masochists like me have done that already. Uh, and code generation and stuff like that. So complexity-wise, you end up with a much smaller code base. Uh, but as always, when you add another abstraction layer, you also lose performance. And some of this performance has to do, I will go away, but we'll come back when we, uh, when we update the JVM and make it faster and make it better, like to run Java. It all scales out to different parts of the world. But some languages um, do not fit extremely well into the Java bytecode uh, mold. Uh, which actually is called Java bytecode, even though it's platform independent uh, intermediate format. Uh, so that's why Invoke Dynamic was born, which is basically a way to um, widen the fit for whatever you're trying to deploy as bytecode and make sure it performs. It's a custom data access thing, so you can break through the uh, uh, Java bytecode abstraction layer. And our mission with Nasor was to prove that uh, it actually was a lot faster than before for something serious, a real application that required this a lot. If you look at languages like Scala that compile to Java bytecode, they are a fairly good fit, even though there are things that, of course, people would need in the JVM to get it to run really well, like tail recursion and so on. Uh, but if you look at Ruby or JavaScript, they, they fit significantly worse into what is Java bytecode. So Invoke Dynamic is the first response to that. But there's plenty of other stuff going on. Okay. Um, you mentioned Rhino, and obviously Nashorn is a play on words on Rhinoceros, the German uh, translation. Um, how much did you have to start from scratch, or was it in any way uh, possible to 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 um, learn from the from Rhino, from the source, from the best practices? Um, we we really thought that we started from scratch, and we really thought that we wouldn't lose. Uh, significant time doing this because the Rhino codebase is 15 years old and has been patched and, and, and evolved a lot. And also the architectural approach to, to implementing JavaScript with Invoke Dynamic is fundamentally different from, from what Rhino has done. Okay. Interpretation and compilation to like a Do you know Mozilla is still working on Rhino? Uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, it still gets contributions and I certainly know that people still use it in production because it provides some of the unique advantages I was talking about like pluggability that you can access your rich JDK libraries using the scripting API, uh, but it certainly does not give you performance. Yeah. So. 
So let's talk about your keynote tomorrow. It's not about Nashorn in particular, so you're talking about the whole polyglot uh, picture, the big picture. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about it? Um, yes, uh, my keynote is a living thing. I want to say <laughs> everything and I trim it down and it grows back and I trim it down, but hopefully I have a nice even level right now. Uh, the key message, I guess, that I'm trying to uh, convey here is that uh, the JVM, um, people have been deploying stuff on the JVM that isn't Java since like 1996 in its inception, but only now is the JVM starting to really turn into a full polyglot platform. Uh, and Oracle's mission is to uh, turn the JVM into a multi-language runtime uh, so that people feel comfortable uh, deploying their dynamic languages on it and they, don't, and they get the performance they need and they can interact with the JDK. Mm -hmm. So um, I would do a historical retrospective that goes back to Lisp because I always like to have a chance to show a picture of John McCarthy in my slides uh, and then <laughs> where we are and then onto the future and I'll talk a little bit about um, the DaVinci Machine Project, which is the incubator that Oracle has in the OpenJDK for implementing new language features that are targeting uh, the goal of becoming a multi-language uh, uh, virtual machine. Okay, cool. Maybe last question, a bit more technical. Um, you said in your blog that Nason is now 100% ECMAScript uh, compliant. Can you explain that? Uh, yes, uh, the ECMA consortium is, is whoever like, has responsibility for the JavaScript language standard and they provide a test suite of some 11,500 tests or so that you have to pass to show that you are a JavaScript compliant uh, runtime. Interestingly enough, none of the commercial large JavaScript runtimes like Mozilla, SpiderMonkey, or IanMonkey, whatever they call the Google V8, um, pass this test. I mean, they're 99.9% .9 compliant, so I shouldn't slag them too hard, but uh, interestingly enough, Nasrn passes 100% of these tests and we think we're the only one who does that. And uh, we choose to do it that way because only when you know that you're JavaScript compliant can you do some serious performance work. Uh, you really can't have compliance and performance at the same time because you implement something efficiently, you find out, which is usually the case, that JavaScript is a horrible language with a lot of special cases. <laughs> uh, so then you have to like make that slower in order to be compliant. But now that we have the compliance, we sort of know uh, we have a springboard to get to, uh, further up, uh, deliver more performance, even more performance than we already have. Okay, so, cool. And I will show you some performance figures tomorrow. Um, I'll show you that shows you how you can take advantage of that. Actually, the JVM is is a very advanced runtime. Uh, garbage collection is is really good, for instance. Great. I'm really looking forward to your keynote tomorrow. And thanks a lot for your time, Marcus. Thank you so much, Claudia. I, I'm a little bit nervous, but I I, I hope I'll. I hope I'll manage to pull through. Uh, it was quite scary to look at the keynote room yeah. and the size of the audience. Don't be afraid. <laughs> It'd be nice to. Yeah, okay. Yeah.